I tweeted something out the other day and people were yelling at me. I said, if I was President Joe Biden, the first thing I do is I'd make AOC the head of the CIA because nobody looks through phones like Puerto Rican women. <laughs> and, and people started. <laughs> Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. And by the way, I've been saying it for some time now. I say it every episode. I really do believe we're the number one podcast in the world. I'm not kidding. I'm so proud of us. It's a really fun show. Us as hosts, we love doing it. I do anyways. Mike does. I don't know about you, but I feel like... <laughs> not sure either. Okay. Ask that question. Okay. <laughs> Good moment. Uh, yeah, no, we have a lot of it right now. We've been shooting 10 episodes this week we yeah. have slated yeah. and uh, been knocking them out. I've been having so much fun, some great guests and uh, another great one today. So just proud of us, proud of the show. Obviously, thank you to everyone for listening, viewing, subscribing, hitting that like button every time, commenting down below. We appreciate you guys. We really do. And I, I really do mean that. Um, this is a, this is longevity, this podcast. I'll be doing this till the day that I croak. Good. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of room for growth here still. Three more years. <laughs> Don't say that. Wow. <laughs> Just, wow. Don't say that. Three more years. <laughs> Just imagine, God forbid, I'll be at his funeral be like, oh my God, I feel like I have, like I took responsibility for that. They like clip it, bring it back. <laughs> They're going to. My, I want you to know that everything you say in the show will live forever. Because, you know. Not the this. Internet. Huh? What? They're probably going to make NFTs out of some of it, to be honest with you. Hey, hey I, speaking of NFTs, bro. Oh, no, please. No, no, no I shouldn't I, have said it. I'm so sorry. Please. <laughs> no, listen, I'm so sorry. No, I just want to say. No, listen. No. We have, a, we have a group chat. It's called Bitcoin Boys. And, uh, you know, a roommate has a good pick. They send it to the, to the group. And Evan had a... Whew, Evan had a pick of the week. I mean, this this coin, this particular token, I think 3x, 4x in value. It's BNT, Bancor Network token. Now you just I'm made not, it go no, up even no, more. No, no, because I'm not plugging it. I, we I'm didn't not, buy it. No. <laughs> we don't own any of it at all. He told us about it at like $2.80. And listen, there's like people in the, in the Bitcoin Boys group chat that are like trusted resources for coin-related news. Evan ain't exactly one of them. He's kind of just a case in there. He sometimes says, guys, everything's crashing. Get out now. Like things will drop by like 10%. He freaks out. But on this one day, he dropped this thing. He's like, yo, BNT, I'm getting very trusted resources that are telling me BNT is the wave. And we're like, yeah, yeah, sure. Whatever, sure you, thing, whatever, you, whatever say, you say, Evan. Evan go nice. back to playing GTA. Go, go play some Grand Theft Auto <laughs> upstairs, all right? This thing, moonshot, Moon. dude. 280, 540, 620, 730. And me and Logan... and. The way I, I am on shit like this, <laughs> if I don't buy it low when you first tell me about it, I ain't ever buying that shit. I don't care if you fucking tell me it's going to do another 100x out of pride. If I don't get in early and I watch other people making money, I'm like, nah, I'm straight. No, nope, Not me. Don't want it. You'll never, nope, you'll never buy you'll it. You'll never get me in now. It's too late for me, dog. You got me looped in today, bro. I literally got sucked into your stupid fucking Grand Theft Auto videos. Bro, I watched you live a fake life. So entertaining. They're crushing. They're Bro, crushing. You went to a yacht. Oh, my second no, you did not. I swear to God. Georgie. I went in there to see if I could, you know, what? see what's going on in Mike's life. You know, try, he's my friend. I want to see what's going on. And just in case if he asks me if I watch his videos, I want to say yes. <laughs> not those. On my second Bro, channel. Gone. Ask me anything in your last video, I'll say it word for word. <laughs> he couldn't swim, but he jumped over. A guy grabbed him by his neck. You thought he was drowning and wasn't. He was taking him to a boat full of girls. With couldn't rice believe gum. It. With rice then gum. a fucking paparazzi, paparazzi guy, not pulled out a gun, a camera. <laughs> Everybody started beating him up. <laughs> I was sitting here going, this is amazing. Yo. And then if they walked too far away, you would just hear them stop talking. They'd be like, yeah, so then he was, I did a book. Cause, cause why it's like yeah, close yeah, yeah, range. proximity chat. So when you get close to people, you can talk to them like in real life. But when you walk away from them, you can't hear them anymore. GTA role playing things on Twitch. They heat up for a little bit. They get hot to get hot. Like it was among us that it switched back to call of duty for a little bit. Now it's GTA role playing with Aiden Ross and T Grizz and all these guys on, on GTA. It is so fun. So fun to watch. And it automatically creates videos. That's the thing. When I Twitch stream, I love it because it's so efficient. I don't have to concept nothing for the second channel. They just clip it, put it together into a nice video and George Jenko watches it. 
Yeah, right, it's well, great. I'm not gonna lie, it's really good. <laughs> it's really yeah, find good. something better to do with your time. Wow. Our guest today Holy. is a comedian, a writer, an actor. You've seen him on MTV's God Code, his Comedy Central stand-up special, and soon as host of True TV's Backyard Bar Wars. It's Chris DiStefano. Yes. It's Chris yes. DiStefano, everyone. Chris, 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 Chris. Can I ask you, you one question? Yes. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for this. You didn't yes. ask it right. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I just went with it. I feel like this is no headphones versus headphones. You, right here, this do, you, do you historically not wear headphones on pods? I'll do like whatever, but I just realized that like we, it's the headphones versus no headphones guys right now. I don't feel like I have a great headphone, you know, head. I think, you, well, because you, you have don't. really nice hair. The hair. I want to that keep hair, up. The hair and I use be. no balding stuff. This is just natural hair, dude. Oh, that makes me I don't have, one Yeah, I have a lot of hair in there, but I don't have pubes. I, I don't grow pubes at You're all. You're lying through the skin Full, of your teeth. Fully Did you laser blank. them? No, dude. I just don't. I just, I don't. And I don't, don't grow leg hair. What Prove are you it. talking about? I swear to God, dude. My, I just, I'm hairless. I'm like a sphinx besides my head. <laughs> That's why I'm Chrissy the Sphinx back in Brooklyn. I swear to God. He, he has no leg Look hair. This kid. You got no leg hair? No, 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 no. Him, him, him. But why is, her, is his teeth so white? What the hell is going <laughs> what's, what's up with this kid's teeth, bro? And what are you your doing? teeth too. What are you doing, George? What the fuck is going do on I, with everybody's teeth? You gave that both guys. No, your teeth are not great. <laughs> Um, but I mean, this kid's teeth is just one of those things. I was like, am I having a stroke? Wait, hold on. Your Do teeth, you have, no, you can't natural? have white teeth like that in 2021. I've it's too white. I've never had any braces, whitening, nothing. Wow. Never Your teeth are insane, dude. You know what's funny? <laughs> this, 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 Do you want to hang out or what? <laughs> I mean, you're hairless. I feel like you're kind of throwing a vibe at me. I'm, I'm a hairless face cat, dude. Look at his kid's teeth. They're wild. <laughs> yeah, he got great teeth. He's good looking. I feel like if he, I whiten them, it'd be like mean, burning I'll, magnesium listen, and people couldn't see me anymore. First of all, you're all good looking. Okay? Let's let's be honest. We know, here, we know. Let's not let You're all light. hotties. No, we know. Yes. The lights. Yeah, I mean, it would have been nice. I mean, yeah, you can, fuck, yeah. fine, <laughs> fuck the lights. She's like, eh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, uh, thanks for coming on our podcast. I appreciate you having me. I really do. You have a podcast. I do. I have a podcast. I have one podcast called Chrissy Chaos, where we go wild. We just interviewed uh, my uh, wife's uh, transgender uncle who just got out of prison. Shout out TT Jerry. I, is that what's dude? He blew son, he blew ew, son ew, of Sam in that, prison. This is so. what's on your Instagram. Oh, yeah, I mean, dude, this, is fantastic. this kid. First of all, this guy <laughs> this is TT. I'm all, uh, I go to patreoncom Christy Comedy. That's my Patreon behind the paywall stuff. The proceeds were going to TT um, since he got out of prison. He's not getting his estrogen therapy, so we got it. We're, we're trying to we're financing this kid's estrogen therapy oh, fire. through my patreon and, and we're buying and selling t-shirts for my man tt he's um he's wait my, yeah what happened my man tt my my well right now tt told me until he gets fully because he right now he's got uh beat b tits and he said he wants to get to d's and then he'll fully commit to being a woman so he does identify as a he man wants, right no, now he told listen when he came in to do my podcast he walked in wearing a sweatshirt of mine um i gave him a sweatshirt from the denver comedy works a year ago when he got out of prison so i gave him a guy sweatshirt and then he left wearing my girlfriend's sweatshirt so he kind of flows he goes with pretty the flow. symbolic dude don't you think of this episode with this guy I was I was fascinated. He also he also hooked up with Ronald DeFeo Jr., who the Amityville Horror House guy. Fire. He hooked up with him. He played basketball with Tupac. It's Sorry. one of the most insane stories of all time. He was in prison for 25 years. Oh, T. T. Jerry. Where, where, where at? In Rikers? No, right upstate New York. Right. He was like, it was on and off prison. He was on and off uh, uh, prison sentences, but 25 years total. So this guy just came on my podcast. You know, I do it for my living room, my, my house. You know, my daughters, you know, his, you know, niece. He's in the, I keep telling her to earmuff because he's like, you know, he's like, I slice the guy's dick off with a tuna fish can. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Baby, that's fire. Yeah. I like yeah, dude. But it was dope. It was dope. So I got a, a podcast, Chrissy Chaos, where I do stuff like this, and then I have a podcast with Sal Volcano from the Impractical Jokers called Hey Babe, where we don't even curse. So I just I'm, Chris, I'm Chrissy flip flops. I'm, I'm just in two worlds. But those are my podcasts. But I appreciate you shout out my TV shows that nobody watches. Oh my god, it's all about the pods, dude. Oh, doing is. this stuff. Doing stuff like this, the internet and doing the Patreon stuff, I feel like that's just the future. I mean, I'm out here doing a TV show, but I only said yes to it because it's True TV, Backyard Bar Wars. It'll come out in July. Hopefully you guys like it. But I really just, so I could do podcasts. That's why I said yes to it. If if they were filming in like fucking North Dakota, I'd be like, no, I'm not going to do it. I mean, I, I, I got to do my podcast. What's, what the comedians have flocked 
to Patreon. It's like the OnlyFans for comedians. You know why? <laughs> because in some, like, especially with comedy, like, you know, like I, anything you say now, like there's just groups of people that just want to be like, you're canceled and they don't know anything about your <laughs> you're life. You're good at that voice. So it's just like st stupidity because it's just like weak, those cancer people, they're just like weak, scared people that like, they've never had power in their life. They're like, I want to take other people. So Patreon <laughs> gives us, gives us a uh, platform to be like, hey, we could say whatever you want. You as the fans control my career. I'm not, I don't have to abide, you know, I don't fucking have to say and stay in a box because Jimmy Fallon wants me to or Colgate Toothpaste wants me to. Patreon.com is like, hey, I could just say what I want. You pay $5 a month, $10 a month, whatever you want. I give you extra bonus content. You like it or not. And that's where all, that's where, you know, Andrew Schultz, Tim Dillon, that's where everybody's building their fan bases. It's the best way to do it, I well, think. Well, maybe hey, not. You're preaching to the choir, dude. Maybe it's, oh, yeah. maybe it's, maybe Patreon's not the best place. But what one is of the best the, place? Hey, well. Oh, you guys got your own thing. Oh, well, you get hey. kicked off everything, right? I mean, you just get no, kicked off. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, they I, love us you everywhere. You thought we got the platform? Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I, don't, no, I don't know. Dude. I don't no. know the rules, no, dude. We almost oh, did when we had Alex Jones on. We're we almost fine, did. Bro. You almost put Alex we're, Jones on, yeah. Well, no, we had AJ on. Right. And YouTube did not like that. They don't like that. But they don't like AJ. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, when does it end, right? I mean, it's just like, stop it what if, already with canceling everybody. Just what if somebody it. pays you? Right. Or sorry, what if somebody pays for the Patreon and they're a canceler? Like, they're like, oh, let's go in there and see. You, you do I figure like, like it I, happens. But I, yeah, but I almost feel like then it kind of like devalues the canceler because it's like, you, you look like such a jerk <laughs> you off. You went looking for if trouble. If you're paying $10, to look, it's like, dude, shut up, nah, you know? Nah. And it's so funny because like people, like my uh, my family, right? My, my girl's Puerto Rican. My, my daughter's half Puerto Rican. I another child on the way, definitely going to be Puerto Rican, I think. So it's just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm El Blanquito. I'm all about like the Latino lifestyle, you know? I'm like in, you know, with, with the Puerto Ricans. And like, so sometimes I tweet stuff then I'm like, yo, I'm like the white guy that like lives amongst my Puerto Rican people. I tweeted something out the other day and people were yelling at me. I said, if I was President Joe Biden, the first thing I do is I'd make AOC the head of the CIA because nobody looks through phones like Puerto Rican women. And, <laughs> and people started and people started being like, you're canceled. One guy said to me, no, it's just crazy because one guy goes, you've probably never even met a Puerto Rican person. No. And I was like, what, dude? My daughter was next to me legit doing Zumba. She I'm went, like, I've never she, met a Puerto Rican. Look at this kid. She's hit me in the head with fucking empanadas and shit. I've never met a So it's like, that's what, on the internet. Now I just post. I don't even look at the comments. I just post and fly. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the only way to do it online. Yeah, days. dude. You have to, especially uh, if you're doing risque content. Yeah, dude. I mean, yeah. I mean, you guys must look at you. never can look at your comments, right? I mean, we you can't. Do. I it's only fun. get it from my mom. It depends. It depends on what you what you do when you look at them. If they if they're fun to you, like right. we try. I try to have fun with them. I, I I like to enjoy the craziness in people. Right. Like when somebody comes with a canceling thing, I'm like. Did they, that really offended you that much? Right. Did that really upset you that much? Right. Or are you just trying to get? I try to. I try to take feedback. Like I don't mind it. if, yeah, some, if yeah. someone's like, "Yo, this comment was a bit too far. You're a dickhead." Now that I'm 25, I feel like I have a a strong opinion on things, and if I deem you wrong. I'm unaffected, right? But, but maybe I listen to to and some what people are saying. Dude, sometimes. I think it's okay to listen to people. I mean, you know, we all, you know, every, nobody's above you know criticism. We all can take you know advice from people and get critiqued by people. But some people, it's like you know, like even sometimes, like when you listen to people or like when you watch certain people, like in the media or even like you know society, it's like there's no you know, racism, sexism, all these things, it makes money for people. Like yeah, people yeah. get, they, it's a whole business. So it's like, I think the first critical mistake is these people are trying to cancel you. They don't want you to learn a lesson. They don't want you to change. No, no, of course, of course not. not. They just, they make money by doing it. Like I felt like, I don't know if anybody, I mean, you guys maybe even talked about it, but I was just thinking about like the hypocrisy from a few years ago when Kevin Hart got canceled for fucking what could he, he could have do like the oscars or something because he like tweeted something out that was like homophobic from like 10 Way years that before. his kid played is, with like a barbie set yeah which is like, like dude that. and then it's like all he's done in his actions throughout the last 10 years is i mean the guy fucking did the movie jumanji it's like that's pro gay <laughs> as it gets dude it's like that's the gayest thing you could ever do is just be the lead of jumanji and then but you cancel him from a tweet from 10 years ago but then on that very same show they honored and had eminem perform <laughs> 10 years ago, he's throwing his wife off bridges and killing her in the back <laughs> no, of the but I'm like, what's the difference? You guys are hypocrites. So that's why I'm with Logan Paul only.
<laughs> fuck, fuck Hollywood. Yeah. I'm, with, fuck I'm on the yeah. Paul train. Dude. Well, they're fuck starting yeah. to like him again. They're starting to like him. But your your point is very accurate. People, no one is trying to teach a lesson. They're either A, trying to get uh. more clout for themselves by getting the most retweeted tweet when they cancel someone yeah. to grow their followers or air dirty laundry because dirty laundry pays the fucking bills. And that's why, that's why for me, I put a lot of, you know, stuff that I like to do, like, you know, the comedy that's like outside the box. In my opinion, is that my thing, patreon.com slash Christy Comedy, because I'm like, this is like, it's He's nasty at it. Dude, wow, I'm yeah. just plug master. Cuz I got a fucking five year old daughter. I got a child on the way whose due date's July 4th. I got to make Congrats. some money, baby. I know, yeah, dude. Yeah. What would you do if I name my kid Donald? Would that be insane to do in 2021? You won't. What? Dude, I'll fucking do it. I'll no, ruin my kid's life no, just won't. to do it for you. No, you won't. <laughs> just what do you think's a bigger a bigger problem? You need to name your kid Stefano. Is it a boy or a girl? Ste I don't know, dude. Stefano Either way, though. If it's a girl and it's Donald, you just like. Dude, either way, it's Donald, boy or a girl. <laughs> Don DeStefano. Don he sounds, like, he sounds you know, like he's going to either try to sell me like a, 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 a grinder at like a Brooklyn pizza shop. Shout out grinder.com slash Christy Comedy. I'm on no there. No fucking way. It's no I'm way. I'm on there, dude. And I'm not I'm buying it. I'm fucking on there, bro. I'm not buying okay, it. Okay, check my profile. You this know, kid knows. <laughs> That's Jake Brito. <laughs> this kid's great. You know, I'm naming my runt, the very last kid I have, who's probably going to end up being the biggest, but technically he's the runt. I'm naming him Paul. And, and his middle name will also be Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul. Paul, Paul. <laughs> dude, it's great, dude. Yeah, I'm going to fuck with my kids. And 100%, names. dude. I think it'll make it tough. I think, think, it'll, make it tough. To I think, I think, I think it'll uh, give them <laughs> character. I think they'll yeah. be able to build off that. 100%, dude. Yeah. Dude, you always had deep conversations. Like, oh, why would GP do that? You know, he always made it, he always blamed it on character development. What if he grew up and he's like, I'm going to fuck with these kids? <laughs> like, he did the same thing you did. You are just a younger version of GP. Didn't Johnny Cash <laughs> make an entire song about this? About Sue? Was it Johnny Cash? I wish people could see like the cultural diversity we got going on. Go, in this ahead, room. go ahead and say it out loud so everyone like knows. It's like a fucking community we're, we're college actually, in we're here. Actually forced, we're actually forced. <laughs> Dude, to. Dude, look at this. After everybody, I mean, look. Say it, say it loud, loud. Look at look at the cultural diversity going on, George. I mean, look at everybody in here. It's Why unbelievable. Say George, isn't that the kid's name, George? Who the that's, I, that's me. Oh, you're George. <laughs> this kid looks like. You ever seen the 1975 that band <laughs> Matthew <laughs> Gilly? This kid looks like the lead singer from that band, dude. Do you know how I got Dude, him to be what are you Greek, by the way? What is this kid? What nationality what are you? What the fuck are you, At least George? I'm not a Muppet. Last comedian what called are you? me a Muppet. Who um, called you a Muppet? I'll beat the shit out of you. Was it Andrew Schultz? Schultz? Dude, Andrew Schultz got quick hands, but I still feel... <laughs> I still feel, you know, if I get some weight behind a fucking two and turn my heel over yeah. and catch that kid, yeah, who cares, dude? He would want to fucking live stream it anyway. The kid would subtitle a knockout. He's insane. He's a sick promoter. Turn your phone sideways. He literally would be like, turn your phone sideways. Yeah, what it is. Knockout. He's getting knocked out. He doesn't care. Oh, that poor Akash. All right. Is he, is, is he your favorite comedian, Andrew? Schultz? Dude, me and Schultz have known each other forever. Dude, we started, we did that show Guy Code on MTV7 in like 2011. 11 or 12. And what I'll say about Schultz is when we were doing Guy Code before anybody even did a podcast, I don't even know if you even had a YouTube channel no. yet. Schultz was on YouTube doing a podcast. Yo, yo. So all these things that have come to fruition with him, you know, th this is no overnight success. Like maybe people have heard of him, you know, the grand, uh, you know, millions of people when he turned the phone thing or got on Rogan. But this kid was doing this stuff Forever. From forever, dude. And and he, there was a while there in comedy where people would be like, oh, what happened? Not me, because I always knew the kid, but other people would be like, oh, what happened to Andrew Schultz? I'd be like, oh, he's banging out on a podcast. I'm like, oh, what a loser. <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, stupid dick. Now they're driving Ubers. <laughs> I'm worried about him. Huh? I'm worried about Schultz. Why? I uh, I did the that flagrant pod yes. down in Miami probably about a month ago. Great. He had been down there for maybe like a couple weeks. White pants. Out of control. Floor, unbuttoned floor shirt, the Cuban links, the oh, toothpick, no. the fedora. He's out of control. He was speaking Spanish. Well, he does that, but he knows Spanish. That kid, know, he went and studied abroad in Spain, I think, yeah. in, in, in his 20s. You so know he knows Spanish now? No, Not I even should, though. Puerto Rican what? Dude, I should. Dami Moscasolina, that's all I know. He, I don't know anything, like, bro. Dude, not, not too long ago, he was eating He was eating <laughs> New York food. I saw him at Bauhaus. Yeah. Now he's he asked me yeah, if I wanted nice. any a rose Thank cone you. pollo. Like, yeah. he's, he, we're losing. He's him. like that. But Schultz, the, no, dude, but Schultz is, he's one of those guys, I mean, you know, he's like a fucking, he's been a mogul like that. Here's the thing with Schultz, is where he's going to get too much power. When Schultz starts to get really too much power, keep that kid out of a helicopter. Do not let that kid get in a helicopter, because I'm telling you, the kid will fucking fly through cloudy conditions, and he'll, he's going to wind up in bad shape. So I we need to keep Andrew Schultz on the ground when he gets really, yeah, yeah. really, really successful, because the kid, he doesn't fear death. He doesn't fear anything. No more choppers. No more choppers I for sent Schultz. that text to my boys in the group chat the other dude, day. Dude, we can't no do it anymore. No more fucking choppers. In 
general. Too, we can't not do even just Schultzy. Too we, dangerous. No, dude, we can't do it. I stay on the ground now. I don't yeah, like yeah. doing it. Yeah. But no, Schultz, Schultz would be Schultz would be good. But yeah, he's wearing a lot of snakeskin, white stuff. I'm but scared. That's what he does. I'm scared. Yeah, Same dude. general area as you. We talked about this when you came in. New York guy. Yes. Brooklyn, right? Yes, sir. How do you feel about the fact that 6 9 represents your neighborhood now? <laughs> um, <laughs> be proud. Dude, yeah. Okay, Takashi 6 9 is actually from Bushwick. That's where I'm right, from. I'm right. from the Ridgewood Bushwick area. Um, He's a lot younger than me, and I never heard of him. But I Tek uh, before, you know, he became Takashi 6 9 I didn't know him before any of that. But um, I don't mind, dude. I like the thing that I like about Takashi 6 9 is he's like, He's all about fucking self-starting. Nobody gave him anything. Same thing that we are, you know, doing here in comedy. It's like, dude, I'm not waiting for somebody to give me a fucking show. I'm just going to create my own stuff and put it out on, you know, we put it out on SoundCloud and whatever it is. And now he becomes the biggest, one of the biggest names in in hip hop. So, I mean, I don't know one of the kids songs, you know, but I, every, and every time I see him, I'm like, am I in mushrooms right now? Like my daughter loves him because she looks like a fucking hello pony. You know what I mean? Your daughter's five. My daughter's fine, but does she like his music? Dude, no, not his hair, but you see that, you know, his, uh, his, uh, he doesn't like his music, but his hair and the well colorful hair. he is. He, you looks know like he looks like T.T. Jerry. Yeah, of course. He looks like T.T. Jerry. He does look like T.T. Jerry. She <laughs> looked at the TV and she was like, T.T. Jerry? I was like, no, it's Takashi 6 9 but they may have fucked each other in prison. <laughs> <laughs> we just got, we're like two days past the anniversary of uh, Biggie's death. Yes, March 9th. Yeah, March 9th. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, I know. I, he wouldn't, here's the thing with Biggie, though. Everybody loves Biggie. I love Biggie. I mean, especially being from Brooklyn. But I mean, there's no way he, the kid would have made it past COVID. No chance Biggie makes it through because the Pandy Wandy. No, dude, are you kidding me? So I feel like either way, I mean, he died March 9th, 97. That sucks. But he was he wasn't going to make it past 2020. Because his weight? A thousand percent, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way, man. Is that the is that the thing? Like a lot of overweight people just dropping because of the COVID? I like when you start to get serious, but I'm just kidding. You're like, is that true, sir? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm saying if you're fat, you're going to die of COVID. Oh, shit. No, no. <laughs> No, I mean, I just wish America would start to say that, though. You know, enough with blaming nursing homes. Just be like, listen, fuckers, you got to We have to lose weight. The blood pressure and fat fucks out here. If you get COVID in America, you're going to die because you're fat, fat, fat. Hey, hey. I'm not. I'm not. You I'm, not I'm not saying you're fat, but I, f I feel like maybe there's some history there. Yes, dude. I am still. I'm. A, I gotta listen. Here's just so you know. Here's how I am a. Uh, I thought relatively healthy guy, but I qualified for the vaccine three months ago because of my BMI. So that wasn't fun. They were like, I didn't get it, but I was like, What do you mean I can get it? They were like, Oh, your BMI is over thirty. I was like, Fuck you. <laughs> I was like, It hurts. But I know, dude. Yeah, I. Uh, no, my dad. My dad just got it. Uh, I didn't think he was going to get a Tampa Tony shout out Tampa Tony. He's probably watching. Um, he was, he was for the longest was not going to get the vaccine, but then I just convinced him to get it, dude. He was the guy who was literally when he was living in New York in, in March and April of, of 2020, he was 75 years old, asthma, diabetes, and a heart condition. Basically everything COVID wants to eat. This guy had in his body and he was taking public transportation in New York City wearing the mask on his ear. He wouldn't put it <laughs> over his face. And I'm like, Dad, can you please put the mask on your face? And he's like, oh, I didn't know I had a gay son. I'm like, what does that even mean, dude? What does that even mean? That's exactly what he said to me. I was like, there's no way. What does that mean? Uh, but now I finally got him to take the vaccine because I was like, if you take the vaccine, the Yankees chance of winning the World Series goes up. He's like, all right, give it to me. By the way, I feel like your dad is probably like the poster child for the persona that continues to embrace the ability to say gay and call people like that. Take here's that the out thing, of context. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. First of all, one of my dad's favorite people in the world is T.T. Jerry. Right, when T.T. Right, right, Jerry right, got right. out of prison, my dad right. was there with open arms. Right. See, the thing is with my dad and people like my father's group, and it's just because you have you have somebody like my dad who was born in the 70s, uh, uh, who was in his 70s, or somebody like my grandpa who's 99 years old. My grandpa's still alive to this day, 99. He still to this day won't eat sushi because he thinks the Japanese are the enemy. <laughs> so it's like, you know what Yo. I mean? But so like, so that guy and that, and, it, and it's, and that's why I love when people, people are like, oh, it's not about you getting COVID. What if you give it to your grandparents? I'm like, my grandparents are racist. Who cares, dude? I mean, let this guy go out with a fever. You know what I mean? Um, but, but, so sorry. But, yo, uh, that, it is no, but, so but, true. But, but, but my it point is, is so like, true. you got old people like that, like my dad and my grandpa on this planet. And then you have people, you know, 
who are, you know, 15 years old who get their news from TikTok and they're both existing <laughs> and they're both and they're both right. I think they're both right from how they see the world, you know, like not that, you know, like the, the older people are going to go away. They're going to start to die and the newer people will, you know, start to populate. So I think like things are getting so much better. They're getting so much better, but like people want results right away. But I just think never in history have we had such a grand, you know, such a, a far spectrum of differences of opinions in like the history of our planet where you yeah. have, I mean, they're living on the same block. People who, could, you know, one, you know, like, like one guy won't use chopsticks and, and, and the kid, you know, is white, born and raised in Queens, but identifies as a Japanese woman. Like that's just what that it is. That lives in Japan. Th that lives in Japan, right. but they, they've never, you know what I mean? But all they've done is play Hello Kitty and they've never, <laughs> they've never left their block, but you have to be like, oh, you know, you have to bow to them. <laughs> Even though they're, you know, so that's just what it is because the rules are, they've changed. So I think we'll get there as a society, but, you know, it's little by little. But thank God my dad's got the vaccine now and it so far it hasn't made him gay because that's what he was worried about. <laughs> how, how far do you think that, how far do you think that avalanche can go? Like, what do you think you'll be available? What do you think you'll be available to identify as in like... 20 years would you what say? do you mean like what so do like i want right to identify now, as no well i'll ask you in a second but like right now we're we're um you can identify as different genders sure we've seen some people that have tried to identify now as different races sure. or as different uh, yeah. from different descents do you think we'll go to different uh to identify as different species or i think also potentially objects so like do you think right. a day where you can identify as a toaster oven is coming a hundred percent i think okay. already i mean already people are starting to identify as nfts i mean you guys are already <laughs> starting to identify as crypto it's becoming <laughs> like a part of us yeah i think but listen here's the thing with i think like what i'm trying to teach my daughter is just to like lead with love adapt to the changes like don't like just give everybody a chance sure. man like just literally give everybody a chance i think the people that come but again I'm born and raised in New York City, so I don't expect some fucking idiot from Nebraska who works, you know, in a what's his know, name in a way. mill. Uh, his name is uh is uh Timmy Paul. Paul yeah, I would say like Paul Johnson okay, or yeah. he's you watching. know. Yeah, he's watching. They're shout out, watching. Yeah, shout out Paul Johnson. PJ. PJ. Yeah. You know, he's watching. He's doesn't, he's not going to read a book about, <laughs> you know, gender identity politics. He's just going to look, you know, he's going to see whatever news channel he subscribes to. He's just going to take that stance because he only sees people that look like him 24 seven. So you got to just deal with these people. I feel pretty, I feel honored and blessed to have grown up in New York City where I see all different walks. Of, yeah, the melting pot. Yeah, I dude. Like so people, it's, like, it's hard. It's almost impossible for me to be racist, dude. I'm more Filipino than some Filipino people because I just know more about about Philippines <laughs> than you know some people were born and raised there so I don't know I don't know man what were we talking about toaster every toaster I, ovens, dude. I don't have one in my Airbnb well somebody might become one there so 100 percent so. <laughs> yeah how am I supposed to toast I guess I can use the oven oven but that's what but that's also what I'm saying like I think people are short-sighted on it like right. if you find a person that identifies as a refrigerator don't get mad at the person put a beer in them exactly you know dude. what I'm saying like exactly. stick a beer in their ass absolutely bro. dude fucking... fast forward 10 years when he's on trial he's like I stuck a beer in him <laughs> he's a you, he said he was a refrigerator you lift, you lift their arm up and it spits out cold tap yeah. beer dude yeah. like bro utilize oh, this, this shit this is what I want dude. to say though where I got so, you asked me initially about how my somebody like my dad and that group of People Clip can get it. away with saying with saying things because because it's his it's his heart his heart like dude my here's an example of my father my dad always has like the right intention but the wrong move right so in in Hurricane San when Hurricane Sandy happened like 2012 in New York City like ravaged destroyed crazy Staten I was, I was Island in and Brooklyn whatever it was yeah. like bad 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 so my father lived a little bit inland on Staten Island and his house didn't get damaged at all but the people who lived on the on the on the shore mostly uh, a Mexican community. They got destroyed. Mexican, Puerto Rican, Latino community. Their houses got destroyed. They were living in like bungalows or whatever. My dad, every day for two weeks, took a, rented a, a U-Haul truck and would go down and help the families out, uh, take the kids to school, whatever they needed. Even one family, he let stay in the house for three weeks while they were getting everything. Uh, you know, a Mexican family while they were getting. Um, Oh, their house and their furniture and all that sort of. My dad let them stay, stay in the house. They were living in my father's house for free. For, he was like, he's helping this family. He didn't know them an hour ago. He's like, you're going to stay with me. But, so that's an amazing act. But with the way my dad is, you know, like the, the guy who, when I went go visit them, you know, the patriarch of the family's name was Jose. My dad would call him Juan. He'd be like, oh, hide the silverware, like all old school dad jokes. But the actions, the actions of my father, because that's the difference. It's like, what did we hear all the time as kids? 
Actions speak louder, louder than, than words. words. My mom was like, Christopher, your actions will speak louder than your words. But now all of a sudden, his words speak louder than actions. Absolutely. It just flipped. Absolutely. And I'm just like, what is this? When did Whoa. this happen? It's just now it's the words. You could be the greatest guy in the world. You say, or girl, or they be. You say one wrong thing, you're done. Even but. though your actions are so much better than the canceling people who are canceling for words. They're all pieces of They've shit. They've shit. You know what a fucking scumbag you have to be to fucking want to ruin somebody else's life for bullshit? Do you know how, how sick and sad you you're have fucked. to be? Yeah, dude. So you got to just deal with it. But that's why I'm protected from patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah, dude. I got three I got three in, and I'll drink this little water bottle, dude. I gave you a big one. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Are you good? Are you good? <laughs> Do, have you listened to me for the past 20 minutes? No. I'm not good, dude. And Do I sound stable to you and like I have a fucking good head on my shoulders? What do you mean am I good, dude? Listen to me. I'm going to kill myself in my Nissan Armada. Oh, no. <laughs> no, don't do that. Oh, hey, sorry. Well, I'm sorry. Do you have, do you have well, unless Nissan Armada is a sponsor, I could change that car to whatever sponsors the show. We no car sponsors right now. Do you think you could do it? So you can kill yourself somehow with Bluetooth? No, no. Yes, yes with Bluetooth. Okay, yes, fantastic. Dude, Bluetooth. Thank you so much. No, no, no. no, 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 no actually, like, shit. Let's just finish all. Bluetooth. Who? Manscaped. Can you kill yourself oh, with a Manscaped? Can you kill yourself with a Manscaped? You just have a hair on him. Are you kidding me? The lawnmower 3.0. You can do the promo code chaos. 20% of checkout. Manscaped.com or promo code chaos. Bluetooth.com or hey babe. Wow! Okay, I can't wait for the sponsor to be like, "Oh, so you let us in with suicide?" <laughs> yeah, dude, I let you in. Manscaped is Fire. the best, dude. You ever shave your balls with Manscaped? No, I actually still use the the lawnmower 1.0, and dude. I've almost cut my dick off like with a tuna can, like TT a hundred fucking 100, times. Dude, what you got to do? I get these huge gashes. They the blood drips dude, down my. I got to switch, do? dog. So I figured it out. When I get a full bush like that, what I do is I tuck it back. I go Buffalo Bill full mangina, oh, and then I shave. Nice. You smart. said you're hairless, right? What bush? Ooh. Oh, oh, no, no, <laughs> dude, I'm sorry I didn't answer right away. Those teeth, baby. Oh my god, they were so hard. I wanted to protest. Oh my god. <laughs> and here's our sponsor COVID spring break is right around the corner. And you know what that means spring break in your pants. Manscaped is here to ensure that the party in your pants never stops. Even Veronica Corningstone wouldn't say no to this pants party. For everyone preparing for a pants party this spring break, I got an exclusive 20% off discount. Use code Logan at Manscaped.com. Manscaped is dedicated to helping you level up on your full body grooming game. The Perfect Package 3.0 comes with Essential Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof, cordless body trimmer, and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine. This is the best trimmer on the market for those of you in need of a chest or ball shave. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin safe technology pioneered by manscaped don't ruin any vibes this spring break or upcoming summer with some peaking pubes coming out of your swimsuit be sure to use their crop cleanser body wash to keep your hair and skin feel healthy and fresh you'll also find the crop reviver ball toner a spray on testy toner that's designed to give your boys a little slice of heaven for a limited time subscribers get two free gifts the shed travel bag and the patented high performance reduced chafing manscaped boxers Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code Logan at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor and always use the right, use the right tools for the job. Back to the program. Yo, this is crazy. Is this okay? Are this we not? Is, is this the angle I don't know. of the show? I don't know. Okay. I wanted to pro. I just yeah, came so out <laughs> swinging, and then I see other people coming in. Like, is this illegal? What he's doing? We could cut it. Man. I lost the can. I lost the 1975 kids on his phone now. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking lost. Do I know he's talking to? Like an, a, a, an agent or attorney, yeah. like, we gotta cancel this guy. Yeah. Are these girls girls in the? Are you okay with that? I'm sorry. See if the I'm girls. Just a lot. See I'm the just, girls. I'm Caleb. a good person, you know. Okay. Uh, uh, Michelle that brought her friend. By the way, when people come here for the first time and yes. see some shit like this, it's Michelle weird for friend. all of us. It's weird. How so, you doing? No, you don't have to bow her. Michelle actually identifies as a leprechaun. So you she can, does. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shout yeah, out! I love yeah, Ireland. Yeah. 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 Great. Hi, Michelle. Nice to meet you. <laughs> She, uh, you. If you didn't hear what she said back, she said, "Good to meet you. See you at the other end of the rainbow, Chris yeah. Stefano." <laughs> I'm gonna get canceled for this. Every, Are you? Every can have their fun, but it's all gonna come back to me. Fuck you guys. Yeah, this but, this is the first time I've been very happy being on this side. <laughs> yeah, but, but my question is, what are we saying that's so bad? Nothing. We're just having. I'm no, a Canadian. Nothing. Shouldn't there be one group of people that can step up to the line or cross it? You yes. would think. Like, why do why do here? You know what's another thing I noticed? Why do comedians get held to the same to to high higher standards than politicians, but politicians don't get held to those standards. Like, you want to cancel a comic for saying whatever they say, but then a politician can just do whatever, dude? It's so bizarre to me. Want to know what I did? What is it? I came out right on, on the first time I came on the show and I said, hi, I'm Mike Malek and I like to smoke crack. 
I'm a crackhead. Dude, and, and I, then you know, I dated a porn star, and I was like, what are you going to say to me, man? What am I going to fucking do next that's going to upset you hold so me, much? Up, Here's up. the thing. I knew you were on crack because you're doing this show barefoot. You have no <laughs> shoes or socks on. Look, this kid's got his foot don't, out. Don't you, don't you Dude, fucking dare. Get that shit off the table. 260 straight episodes, no fucking shoes. Can you shoes? believe this Not kid's one a fucking episode. multi-millionaire with no shoes on? This kid's got no shoes and socks on. I don't know if he's multi. You multi? Kids make it millies. He's multi. Yeah. Oh, fuck. He's multi, dude. Fuck. Dude, it's good to. It's Until good Uncle Sam punches me in the fucking neck, and then it might go back down to singular. We'll see what happens. Whatever, dude. Fuck it that, happens, dude. man. It happens. Look at this kid's got his legs spread open. I can That's see the crypto. Prostate. That's our crypto. <laughs> this is the crypto. He's, he's yeah. a crypto guru. You can tell. Dude, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, well, you guys talked about. It. I'm Chrissy Bitcoins now, dude. I'm like fucking <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm getting all the coins. Oh, I you can. got Bitcoin. I got one Bitcoin and three Ethereum. Shout out. Yeah. Is yeah. There, <laughs> is there a place where we could find out more information uh, about your crypto collections that you wouldn't share here on the show? What do you mean? I don't know. Maybe uh, behind a paywall. Or something. Oh, oh, you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, well, you, yeah, you could go to, you could go there. You go to youtubecom slash Christy Comedy. There you fire, go. Fire. I just started YouTube, baby. I'm fucking yeah. Yo, I heard I've, about this new YouTube thing. I've stolen your stories before. Do you know that? Please take anything on, on you this want. Show. Listen, baby. I told a story on behalf of you. I said it was your story. Yeah, whatever. With your dog, your dog got injected with electrolytes. Oh my god, yeah. How crazy was that? That was you. That was him. That was him. <laughs> I see that How crazy was to that, you? dude? It was so weird. Yeah, my, my they. Where I had to, my dog was dying. My mother's dog, Larry, R.I.P. Larry. Um, he's in uh, he's in dog part of heaven right now. Gay dog part of heaven. And he um, he was a gay dog. Whatever, dude. Even my mother admitted he was like, yeah, he's a gay. Yeah. Well, it's fine. We it's great. It's beautiful, dude. Yeah, yeah. We were gonna put him down. You know, we we went to go put him down. My mother's you know to cry. You know, crying so upset. And the doctor, the vet, comes in. And she's like, you know, we're going to give him a procedure right now. He's going to be gone in about 10 seconds. We just injected into his paw and he's going to be gone. And, um, you know, it's to be all be over soon. And my dog's just like blinking, like looking <laughs> at me <laughs> and my mom. And I'm just rubbing my mom's back. I'm just like, mom, it's going to be okay. And she's so, oh, bye, Larry, you know, holding his paw. <laughs> and then like 10 seconds go by, 20 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds oh, no. and Larry's just like blinking looking <laughs> at us and she's like and then the, the 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 doctor the vet's like sometimes this happens let me just up the dose here or just so <laughs> and then she goes and she puts some more in and then like Larry's just like looking looking at us it's like a minute two minutes my mom's like what's happening why is he in any more pain she's like I thought it was out of any pain I'm like mom it's all gonna be over soon it's all gonna be over soon so then the, the doctor she's like I'll, I'll be right back so she comes back in she goes I am so sorry about that she goes i did go ahead and give your dog electrolytes um she's like you may see a short burst in energy but that doesn't mean anything he's he will he is dying so <laughs> so she's like let me just go ahead so now my dog is strapped up he's like a young pup he's like running around and my mom's like but i don't understand whatever and then she's like i promise you well, i just made a certain mistake i just started working here it's fine let me give him this she was like you know he is dying and then they gave him the thing and then he died you know and then he died you know whatever 10 seconds but the dog next to them was the one who needed the electrolytes. And I was like, did you kill the dog <laughs> next door? Because I never oh thought about God. that. That'd I'm like, so could you fun. imagine you killed the dog next door? But whatever, dude. <laughs> yeah, you could Yeah, you could check out that story on my podcast. <laughs> with you, but you used to, uh, when you were trying to be a comedian, you used to be a teacher. I was a uh, physical therapist. I still, I'm a, I was a pediatric physical therapist. I have a doctor degree in physical therapy. <laughs> wow. which, how sick is that? I mean, dude, wow. coming from these Brooklyn streets, when I got into my physical, look at this, he does, he's fine, lost this kid. He's like, what does he do? What are you texting? I feel like it's related to the show. Are you texting your dentist? (laughs) (laughs) What if you what if you subscribe in your Patreon? (laughs) You do it, dude. Um, yeah, dude. I was I got a doctorate degree in physical therapy, which um even when I showed up my first day of physical therapy school, the uh, you know, dean of the school, I was like, oh, I'm here for the physical therapy program. She was like, are you the janitor? I swear to God. <laughs> she was like, we had somebody spilled something in the back of room 508. I'm like, no, I'm in the I'm in the program. She was like, really? What's your name? I gave her my name. She's like, oh, yes, you are. Here you go. Welcome. And then, uh, yeah, dude, I lost Logan. Um, no, he, uh, no, dude. Once an, what he really once an episode, he spins the chair. I spin the chair. What do you do that for? Uh, it just gets old. Yeah, dude. Well, yeah. do you have back issues? I could give you a massage. I am. A, I'm a licensed <laughs> physical therapist. No, like, I, I I'll massage that. a multifidus. Because when you grab my neck, I wasn't. Hating you like that, right, it dude? Was, it was nice, yeah, dude. See, it's, it's like a nice. But the best physical therapists are my my Filipino friends. Filipinos, the best physical therapists in my school. The best ones were the Filipino kids. They got little hands. They just get in there and yeah, fucking yeah, get yeah. in there, dude. Well, you would skip class to, to go do stand-up bits? I would skip class to go do stand-up. Well, not not skip class. When I became a licensed pediatric physical therapist, I was working in a school, and some days I would miss 
Um, I would miss uh, uh, days at work to go, you know, go on the radio yeah. or, um, uh, you know, go do a show in like Delaware or something like that. So I was trying to burn the candle at both ends. And then um, I eventually left uh, physical therapy um, because the principal of the school was like, you got to choose. It's either you, you do this or you do comedy because you're missing too many days. And it wasn't fair to the kids I was treating either. Like when you're working with mentally and physically disabled children, you can't really mess up their routines too much because yeah, it, yeah. it's a whole thing. So I was like, yeah, you know, you're right. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be doing that. And then it was really the kids that chose for me. I, you know, cause, cause you got to understand a five, six, seven year old child in a wheelchair who's physically can't do what we can do, but cognitively is just the same. They're like 30 year olds. Like yeah, they're yeah. so mature because they just sit, you know, like one kid, I met this kid who I worked with who's a fantastic kid. I was like, how are you so smart? He's like, I just sit and think all day. Mm. He's like, I can't use my legs. So I just sit. Exercise the mind. Do, yeah, and he's just yeah. si and he's six, seven years old. And he's the same one when I was like, hey, I'm gonna leave to do physical therapy, but I'm re uh, leave to do comedy, but I'm really scared to leave physical therapy job. I was like, it's good. I was talking with a seven year old kid. I'm like, <laughs> I got health insurance. You know, I have a doctorate degree. My mother's gonna be so mad at me, like things like that. And he was like, but isn't comedy your dream? Didn't you always want comedy to be your dream? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, so are they, are, do you, are, can you, when you leave here are you going to go do comedy and i'm like yeah that's the plan he's like so why why are you still here why like he didn't wow. like he didn't pro he, he was like so he was looking at me like i don't understand you're getting a chance to live your dream but you're still here with me like i he didn't see it uh, any other way but just go it was so bizarre because he's seven years old that's and that's how um uh, i spoke to him i, I spoke to his family as recently as like two three years ago because i still go back and like donate my time you know because once you get so attached to the kids because a lot of times the kids you know uh, people know like when a when an older woman has a child there's like a lot of you know prenatal issues and all that or there can be but a lot of young women have um you know really young 15 16 17 year old girls who get pregnant sometimes they don't have the proper prenatal care so their children are born with disabilities so there was a lot of like young moms and dads that were like we were like the same age they were even 10 years younger than me and i'm doing the show guy code and then coming the next morning and treating their children. And they'd be like, aren't you that guy from Guy Code? Like the episode last night was about hiding your boner. And now you're treating my child. You're working with my seven-year-old. You know? So, yeah. but it was all good. All the parents, you know, because I was the physical therapist where I was like, it was most, it's mostly women do physical therapy. I was the only, uh, in the school I worked, I was the only male physical therapist. So they, there's such specific instructions. Like you have to be very careful taking the children out of the wheelchair and this and that, but they're kids. So I would like pick them up and like <laughs> run with them like footballs. And I would get in more trouble than them. Cause I'm like, just like throwing these kids up that have like all these issues, but they're loving it. And you're like, dude, it's fucking fun. You know? To yeah. You severed his spine, Chris. It yeah, was fun. Wasn't it was, it? Like, yeah. But it's like, you know, he, he the and no kid, no kid that I like, even if like, you know, we, you know, weren't supposed to do something like threw a ball at them or took them out of the chair they even they were loved it they were like right, even right, if right. it was like against their doctor's orders they were like dude i'm seven because, years old because for the same reason they told you then why are you still here why are you they don't kids don't let things things right. or, or ideas from other people get in the way of what they love the right. passion in their life and right. that's the same message he conveyed to he's like yo all of this like 401k, no. my future, my like my direction in life is all a smoke screen that pu that pulls away from yeah, your desire to to chase your dreams, bro. Dude, Kids know that. Money, money is just energy. That's all money is. It's like you, dude, you don't, you know, we get so attached to that. It's like, who cares? I mean, yeah, you need enough money to live. Don't get me wrong. But it's like, dude, doing things. Once I had my daughter, I was like, why am I only doing things for money? Like, it's just literal energy where it's just like that. I can fucking take that or leave it. As long as I have enough for her and she can do what she wants. It's like, I'm never, I don't care. Like, I would never do something that I think is going to, you know, I'd have to sell my soul for, for money. I'd sell my soul to give her a better life, you know, whatever that means for her. But I wouldn't do that just for fucking. And I only learned that when I became a dad. I was like, oh, shit. Life is not about the things that I thought it was about at all. It's just about, you know, getting my kid more fucking empanadas. <laughs> That's all it's it. I got to get my kid out of Acapulia. Does she uh, live in Puerto Rico? Where'd you meet this girl? <laughs> Does she live in Puerto Rico? Imagine, dude. My daughter lived in Puerto Rico. Now your, da your daughter. Sorry, your wife. My uh, wife? Uh, oh, that's a shitty segue. No, no, dude. <laughs> she lived, no, I, she, I sparred today, dude. I got hit in the fucking head. Did a you, dude? A couple times. More than I would have Dude, liked. none of the gyms are open. Can I just work out here? Yes. Every Everyone already 100%. does. hundred percent. All right, I'm just yes. going to come over. Literally, I'm going to come over every day and work out. I mean, how far are you It's hysteria in this state. It's like. Jesus, relax. I know COVID's real, but fucking relax. How far are you from the crib? Not 10 minutes. Bro. But 
you're only here for like a week, eh? No, I'm here for two months. Oh, oh, yeah. that's right. You said that. I'm here for two months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here for two months. So I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna come. I'll let myself in. Hey, I'm serious. If you yeah, I swear to God, yeah, I have no, I have nothing, and I cannot. If my tits come back, dude, it's bad. I got yeah. like puffy nipples, and they're finally getting depuffed a fire, little bit. Fire. What's your diet like? I've been doing using my fitness pal. For the first time ever, I've been tracking calories. Like I'm on Weight Watchers. Like I'm on my mom. Wow. Is that a brand deal you got there? No, oh. I wish, but it could be. <laughs> YouTube.com. Um, <laughs> um, Your wife saw. Yeah, my, I'm wife, so my sorry. wife. My wife. So where'd you meet this girl? She, we met actually in um, in uh, in Brooklyn, in a Coney Island, Brooklyn. So a lot of Brooklyn, you know. Yeah, see, he knows. Dylan yeah, knows yeah. Coney Island. Yeah. Shut up out of his seat. Dude, this kid knows. Talking about he, Brooklyn. He now. fucking knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's. Because a lot of the like the new Brooklyn, like you know, gluten free cupcakes, absolutely, like right, right. yes, like you know, quinoa. Yeah. They will never go to Coney Island. They because right, right. that's like real Brooklyn people would only go out there. It's too far. The train's too far. But old school, like you know, I'm an Italian Irish. My girl's Puerto Rican. We like it's like catnip. Like we love each other. We can't <laughs> we can't stop. So we go to this place in Brooklyn. It was called Place to Beach, and um, <laughs> and uh, that's the name of it. And um, and uh, we met. And literally, dude, like I saw her and I was like, holy shit, like this is fucking Mia Sposa right here. Like I have to, I have to stop. I, my life has just changed because I saw, yes, because I saw my girl. Oh, I watched your unaired sitcom. Oh, the CBS pilot? So wait, it's based on your life for That's real, for real. based on my life for real, for real, for real. Yeah, dude. Because in in the unaired sitcom, yes, you meet a, a Puerto Rican in a bar. And yeah, that's exactly how it happened. That's in exactly real life. how it happened. Yeah, my CBS sitcom pilot, which is in the trash in CBS right now, it's in the fucking a toilet. In it's Burbank, not California. It's not completely in the trash. I it, put it up on my Instagram illegally. They were like, "You can't do this." I was like, "Stop me!" No, look, at, it was I, the pandemic. I probably had COVID. You I told me fog. I was gonna have a yeah. TV show. Yeah. Look, yeah, this is it with Diane Guerrero, who's a great actress. Diane yes, Guerrero. she is. Yes, she is. Yeah. I DM'd her this morning because I saw this. Diane is the best, and my father. Played yes. by Chaz Palminteri. Wait, you don't want to stop at what he just said right there? No, damn her, dude. She can, yeah. I mean, and she's great. She has, she's, she's truly like, not only is she a phenomenal actress, she's like a great person. Yeah. Yeah. God, yeah. I, re I, I liked her enough to send her a DM. Send and it, I, I dude. Knew, knowing she, nothing about I don't know if she's going to reply. She no, Maybe she will. Not, probably no, not. I don't know if she, that she checks it, but uh, dude, I can, you know, I could text and be like, hey, you want to talk to uh, Logan? No, if I play this though, am I going to get copyright? I don't think. I mean, dude, got, I put it on got, my Instagram. Yeah, but if you got in trouble. Like, I'm. I know. I didn't. No, no, I didn't. I didn't get in trouble. Up. Nobody said it. No, nobody said anything to me when I played it. When I put it on, nobody said anything. But okay. I yeah, did my pants on that ride. <laughs> yeah, they don't care. They literally couldn't care less. Look. Hi. Ugh. I'm Chris. Oh, shitty acting. Is he? Guess what, Izzy? I'm here to make you smile. Oh, <laughs> Really? Yeah. Is that what you said to your wife? <laughs> What did I say that? Well, I'm he, here to make, here to make smile. The pilot, probably not. The pi I was, I, dude, I was literally drinking strawberry vodka. I had like three strawberry. I don't really, I'm a lightweight, but my boy, Pat Finnegan, Patty Fly Ball, shout out. We went to his uh, sister was there hanging out at this place. So he was like, dude, you got to start drinking. I was like, I don't really drink. And then he gave me like two or three strawberry vodkas and I was lights out hammered. So I think I actually walked up to my girl in real life and told her that I was, she was, I was like, what do you do for work? And she was like, oh, that she was like a Zumba instructor. And I was like, oh, I'm a salsa instructor. <laughs> and she was like, are you really? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> and then she was like, and then she was like, well, dance for me. I was like, I, you know, number one, like I can't because I have a, I have a bad knee. Uh, no, <laughs> I was like, number two, like, no, you have to come to my salsa studio. And then she was like, okay, I'll come to your salsa studio. And then, um, and then I had a, an issue. And then I very quickly, like five minutes later, I was like, I just want to let you know, I, I lied to you. Like, she was like, so you immediately started this relationship that you want off with a lie. And I was like, yeah. And then she turned around and walked away. Oh, shit. And I was like, oh, fuck. So, and then, and then, and then, but then like a week later, she, she messaged me and, uh, and we started hanging out. And then the second date, she got pregnant. We had a fucking Bambino oh, right away, which at first my family was like, what are you doing? But then as it's played out, I'm like, I'm so happy I did it that way. Yeah. Because if I would have waited, if, you know, because then like your brain starts to play tricks on you when you're like, maybe I don't like her. Maybe I don't love her. But yeah. like the fact that we just like, I immediately was like, we're connected. And yeah, now you got no choice. Now it's like, no, now it's yeah, just like, locked in. we just keep finding yeah. ways to get around things that you would be red flags. That I would get out of a relationship with anybody else. On. Yeah, like she, you're like, she tried to stab me one time, but she does have my child. So yes, it's like, it doesn't fine. matter. Yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah. Like a couple of months ago, I wouldn't give her my phone and we live on the 12th floor. And I was like, she was like, 
give me your phone. I was like, no, I'm not giving you my phone. And she was like, give me your fucking phone. And I'm like, no, I don't want to give you my phone. She's like, give me your phone. I'm like, no. And then she kicked our air conditioner out the window. Nice, wow. nice. But, you know, yep. then I just picked up the baby and I was like, who's hungry? You know, like, <laughs> be- <laughs> but this pilot was made by uh, uh, Bays and Thomas, um, uh, who made How I Met Your Mother. So that show, How That's I Met Your Mother. Sh- That's why it's ha- uh, it looks exactly like How I Met Your Mother because it was the guys you. who created it. They saw me doing stand up in a comedy club just yelling at the comedy seller about my life. And they were like, we should make a TV show. Why did this not get picked up? Because I, I, I actually I actually liked you in it. And I like the I like the cast too. There's a couple besides Diane, there's a couple of heavy hitters in it. Who's yeah. the, who's played your dad? Chaz Palmentary, oh, who, yeah, who's the lead yes. of a Bronx yeah. tale. And now, dude, Chaz Palmentary, first of all, Bronx Tale is like that's like the movie. The if movie. you're like an Italian kid growing up or in from New York Warner Burrows, yeah. it's like that's the movie. Yeah. And like now that guy played my dad, we're like legit friends. Like Chaz and I are like, and he just started a podcast too. I think it's called the Chaz Palmentary Show, which is great because he talks about like all like behind the scenes of a Bronx son, he's going to have like Robert, like people who would never do a podcast like Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci yeah. are just like Chaz's friends. They're just going to do it with him. So, um, but yeah, Chaz played my dad. Annie Potts played my mom, who's from like uh, Designing Women and um, the original Ghostbusters movie, The Receptionist. You've seen Annie Potts. She played my mom. She was great. And uh, it just didn't get picked up, I think, because, uh, you know, because fucking Les Moonves sexually assaulted me. What did you say? Oh, is that, is that what, what it is? Yeah. Happening? Yeah. What, what did you say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, he got tr- less. <laughs> less Moonves got in trouble like a year after for like fucking whatever bullshit canceled. So I was like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know the story, just but blame um, it on um, that. I'll just blame it on that. I, no, I think it didn't get picked up because I think that, um, you know, I learned that I learned the business part of Hollywood doing that uh, sitcom is like a lot of like the production companies that like make a pilot. Like they're all in house at CBS where my pilot was made by Sony production company and they didn't have a deal with CBS. So it kind of feels like I'm sure there was some creative problems, but it felt like the most thing was like it was business stuff. And it was crazy, dude, because I was literally on a flight from San Fran. I put my whole a year. 2016 was just dedicated to doing this pilot in CBS, going back and forth to LA. I had a little daughter, you know, she was one. By the time the pilot doesn't get picked up, she's like two. And I'm just like missing moments in my daughter's life. Cause I'm like, this is it. I'm going to put all my eggs in the TV basket, which I learned a great lesson. So, so, um, the day that they're picking up the pilots, all the, I'm sitting on a plane in San Francisco, go, going back to New York and all the deadline articles are coming out. Like, Hey, CBS picked up these four shows and yep. boom, boom, boom. And mine's not on it. <sighs> so I text my agent and I'm like, oh, I guess, you know, we're done. Like whatever he goes, no, 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 no. He goes, we just got a call from CBS. They're going to pick one more show up mid season pickup. It's between you and this other show, some show about like the Bible. They were like, I was like, okay. So I'm, I tell my mom, like, yo, Ma, you got to start lighting candles in church. We're up against the fucking Bible. So I'm like, I'm like, you got to start praying to whatever you can. So, 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 so um, they're like, so it's not out of the woods yet. And they said, let's move as in the CBS people are going to make the decision in 10 minutes. And I'm like, I'm on a runway. Like the, the, the flight attendant were like literally like moving up. Yeah, you won't they're like, know. oh, you're second for takeoff. Right, right, right. And I'm like, the, she's like, can you please put your phone in airplane mode? Can you please put your phone in airplane mode? You're and like, I'm, no. like, I'm like, it's in airplane mode. And I just like turn it right <laughs> off. And then whatever and i'm looking and i swear to god dude as like we're accelerating like the fucking agent text comes through they went with the bible no (laughs) my head i swear to god i swear to god as we're going up like you know the momentum just pushes your head back i push my head back into the chair for two hours I just looked at the ceiling, like that little, you know, like the thing, the air, it was just blowing in my eye. It was just for two hours. Then I had like a, a fucking Pinot Grigio, you know, drank one and just got smashed on the plane. But I, what the lesson I learned was one, you know, you know, especially with like entertainment, like I waited for somebody else to give me something and I would never make that mistake again. Now I'll just do my own thing. I'll create my own content. I'd rather just create my own stuff and I'm in charge. And yep. I, even if it's less money, I'd rather just do that. And two, you know, really like only I really, this is only like, I, I made it like, this is going to change me and my family's life. Expectations. Cause my daughter who was two and a half at the time when I got home and I was like, and she was like, you know, I, I sat my whole family down. I was like, you know, that show that daddy was doing well, it didn't get picked up. And so my daughter was like, I'll never forget. She was eating a pancake with her hands. She was just like eating a pancake with her head. And she goes, um, she was like, okay. She was like, so th- we can't go to the park then. Oh. And I was like, no, of course we can go to the park. And she was like, okay, but you said that like there was a big problem. Because I've said, oh, we, I said we have a big problem. Daddy show didn't get picked up. And she was like, oh, but we can't go to the park then. And I was like, no, of course we can go to the park. And she was like, so let's just go to the park. And then it kind of was like a lesson. I was pushing her in the swing. It was a lesson like, 
dude, this is what life, this is your life. Your Hold life. on a second. Just push your daughter wow. in the swing. Who cares about I mean, CBS? Like so I love it. What movie? I, I love it. It's beautiful. And you're right. And I get no, it. No, you're beautiful. No, thank you. I know. The simplicity of what happened there was awesome. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm not, dude. I got a red beard. Like, what? What do you mean you got a red beard? My beard is red. Like, what? So what, dude? But but my that's what happens when you wash it a lot. Blonde guys get red beard. No, bro. <laughs> what, red beard. What, what girl goes, oh, yeah, I like pale white white blonde dudes with red beards. Like, dude, I'm are not, you kidding I'm me? Not, hands well, you got clout. You got you clout, look too. No, no, feel the scaliness oh, in my hands. Dude, I, but I like that, dude. You like a fucking See? Viking that, See that? vlogs. See You're that? the vlogging Viking. I'm the vlogging Viking. Some women are into vlogging Vikings. 100%, dude. Now, you know, but listen, like what, nice what, what she said, mind. she said, what's the problem? Don't feel his hands. They're silk. I felt his hands already. No, you'll, you'll, it'll make you question yourself. By six, nine grand. It'll make me hard. <laughs> I don't need blue shoe when I get this kid's hands. Uh, what, what if what if you had to really answer your daughter's question? Like, what if you were in a pinch and you're like, well, you know, honey, it's a big problem because we won't be making money, and which means we're going to lose this house, which means you're not going to be able to go to the private school that we sent you to, which means you're not going to have the food on your table that we promised yeah. you every night, and you really get into it. Like, that particular circumstance, I get it, and your daughter's sentiment is, I mean, the... The the naivety of kids is beautiful. Amazing. It was what we were talking about yeah. earlier. It's a, they don't understand and uh, make everything as complex as we do no. as adults, which is awesome. But you were able to skate by. Yeah. There's someone I, I feel like out there who that is a big problem. Like, I, right. you know, I didn't get that promotion. Right. I actually got let go of today. Yo, no, people that's happened, especially with the pandemic. I mean, that, that probably happened to hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of families. But I just think, you know, you make your life smaller. Like I make... I've made my world and my life a lot smaller. Like even like when we get caught up in like, you know, all the issues that are going on. Like I woke up today, everything was fine on my block. My family and everybody was healthy. If anybody needed my help with anything, I would help them in a heartbeat. But like if you go on, but also on Twitter was like the koala bears are going extinct because of the Australian wildfires. I'm like, dude, I've never even seen a koala bear. Like, <laughs> except when I go to the Bronx Zoo and I'm on mushrooms. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I talk to them, I'm like, I have chlamydia too. <laughs> they all but, have chlamydia. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I'm just like, so I, that's what I would do is just make my life, like, you know, be like, okay, we can't do the private school. We don't have this house, but like, you know, we still have the park. We still can eat. We still can, we still have each other. Like, like, that's what I think as a family, like, that's why I feel very protected because I'm like, oh, I, my, I, as long as my family's on my side, I don't care at but, all, and dude. We have it. We yeah. have it even easier because we don't even have a family. We have right. each other. But each other, bro, I've, right. I've boiled it down to like, if I'm alive in my body and healthy in that body, like if I, if I got this, like I'm good. I'm dude, good. I can. And then even if like, it's like people get so it's like, dude, we're all going to die one day. Like, so what? it's like, what's the difference? It's like, it's all going to end anyway. So it's like, just fucking relax guy. That sucks. Oh, he doesn't think he's going to die. Sucks, no, he didn't know. Way. He didn't know. You didn't know you were going to die. Yeah, dude. A hundred percent. Dude, you kind of look like what you kind of look like <laughs> is like a new age Jesus. Like I feel like if Jesus came back, this would be the kid. This is exactly what he'd look like. It's just a kind of. He's cool also like the biggest Christian ever. I like all he's around and quotes. You know, he quotes all day. Like John three sixteen says, and really, are you Christian or Jewish? Extremely. No, no, no I'm not Jewish. Are you Greek? Out <laughs> <laughs> of what? I'm oh, a Syrian. A, 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 a Coptic Syrian. Christian. Yeah. Coptic. Coptic Christian? Um, um, I don't know what that means. What's oh, I thought the, I thought the Middle Eastern, like any, um, like Egyptians, like there's a Coptic Christianity. It's like a sect of Christianity. Uh, what type of Christian are you? Like I'm Catholic. So Assyrians in general are more Orthodox, uh, like Catholics of the East. So like Khan is the Christian. Yeah. But regardless, I just you know, dude, I know. I, I just have Jesus in my life, and I kind of same. Love dude, I got two fucking. Catholic tattoos all over my body. I got a cross on my back. It's like I'm fighting in a crusade that doesn't exist. <laughs> Dude, you're on my squad. Let's go. Absolutely. And I leave with love too. That's why when you were talking about this, no, I you was gonna, don't. I do. I wouldn't kill Hitler. You wouldn't kill Hitler? Yeah, no, we well, don't. that's we a stupid kill, we, mistake. We, yeah. Why would you absolutely not? You should kill Hitler. No, nah, my theory on it is uh, I oh, won't no. kill anybody because I don't want to remove their chances of being forgiven, one, or making a better decision in life. It's a good point. Listen, good people do bad things. Bad people do good things. It's what it is, baby. Your headshot on IMDb is the worst. No, I mean, look at this. Oh, that's, all, that's pretty. Wow. <laughs> what is that? Wow. I'm never changing it. I got hit on you at a, dude, like a local Trader Joe's once. Dude, I, I swear to God, that literally I have a friend who did photography. His name is Vinny. <laughs> and like he, we took this. Uh, <laughs> yo, dude, we took that on Bath Avenue in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, out of his garage. 
But this is, a, this is a thick tie. I noticed you could see the outline of it even absolutely, through dude. the shirt. I was still in physical therapy school there. That was when I was still, that was That's my last why. year they of physical therapy school. They let you near kids school. like that? Yeah, no, this was 2010. I was graduate. I was in my last year of physical therapy school. Yeah, dude, I, and I want. I, that's when I started comedy. I started doing open mics at this place called the Maui Taco. <laughs> <laughs> the Maui Taco. The Maui Taco. Dylan, dude. you ever been there? No, I can't say that. <laughs> yeah, dude, the Maui Taco. That's when I started in 2010. Started doing stand-up. Yep. I started doing stand-up this year. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I started this small thing called uh, Joe Coy st- Show. Oh, really? <laughs> that's where I started. You just put me on stage and I tried on, to like, like in like Like theater Joe Coy, the... Uh, what do you mean? Yeah. Like he, uh, went, like he was doing a theater show, and you from, went out and did stand up. <laughs> he brought me on stage. And I just started. Oh God, how'd it go? Uh, amazing. It was really? Great. Yeah, yeah. It was a, how it was, often do you do it? Uh, anytime he lets me. So, but I, do you really want to do stand up? I love stand up. Yeah, no, but I'm it. saying, but you got because you know what? Something. The owner of Gotham Comedy Club, this guy Chris Mazzilli, great guy. When I was doing comedy, I was take, I took a, a comedy class when I first started. What's I was like 24. I was like, my, you know. She was like, what do you want for your birthday? I was like, can you buy me this comedy class? I had no money. So she bought it for me just to like get comfortable with the microphone and all that. Yeah. And we were doing the classes and I would do it like you just once a week. I was like, oh, I got on stage. Ooh, yes, yeah, is great. You know, and then, but I really wanted to do it. And then Chris Mazzilli came in, the owner of Gotham, who's owned the club for 20 years, knows everybody, you know, anybody you've ever heard of Chris Mazzilli's put him on his stage. And he says uh, to the class, there was 19 of us. And he goes, if any of you wanted, to, he goes, first of all, statistically, none of you are ever going to make it. None of you are ever going to make money in this. I'm not saying to discourage you. I'm just telling you how hard it is in entertainment. It is so difficult to make money in any form of entertainment, but specifically stand up. It is so, so, so hard. He was like, so most of you will never make it probably out of statistically 19. None of you will, will, will come back. He's like, but if there might be one of you who hears what I'm about to say. And then I was just like, I'm going to hear what this guy's fucking say. Like, I remember like my, my head being like, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm going to be the guy. And you know, and, and this was before blue chew even came out. So I was already just out of my mind nuts before years before blue chew. So I was like, I was like, I'm, I'm listening. And he used, cause I played basketball in high school and college. So he, so I was like, um, he said, he said an NBA athlete, a basketball player, they don't just play the games. They practice every single day. They eat, sleep, and breathe basketball, jump shooting and defense and everything. He said, for comedians, it is the exact same. If you want if you want to just do it as a hobby, do it as a hobby. But if you want to be a professional comedian, it has to become your life. You have to sacrifice things. You have to ruin relationships. Like this, ha- you have to be obsessed with it or you're all wasting your time. If you want to make it, if you just are doing this for shits and giggles and a dare, then please enjoy the stage. We love having you. But I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be that fucking guy. And then, and then, and then I changed. Then I started doing 40 sets a month. That was like the goal in New York City. Get on stage 40 sets a month. I would do stand up till like three o'clock in the morning and then wake up at seven, you know, to get the kids when I was working as a physical therapist off the bus, work, burn the candle at both ends, ruin relationships, you know, all that mother threw me out of the house, <laughs> all these things that I, not that I was, and I just wasn't even realizing that I was doing exactly what he said you had to do. And then kind of like, just like kept going, kept going, got on the David Letterman show. And then I was like, you know, still not even thinking about Gotham. I had forgot what Chris Mazzilli even said. I was just like, boom, 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 going, going, going. And then in like 2015, I, for the first time, I headlined Gotham Comedy Club, his club. And I was sitting there and he was like, oh, hey, because I had never actually met him. I had just seen him that time, you know, five, six years before. But he shook my hand. He was like, hey, he was like, uh, he was like, we're happy to have you at the club. I'm Chris. He was like, "Uh, it's it's nice to meet you. And And then it hit me. I was like, oh, shit, I'm that guy. I was the guy that he said, if one of you listened, because he said, nobody will ever headline my club. Most likely none of you will ever headline. I was like, I'm headlining this fucking club. I can't believe this. But then, you know, and I was like, I dedicated my whole life to it. So now that's why it's interesting to hear you say it, because I feel like I've now given my life. Every every day I got to go up on stage with a suitcase full of anxiety and depression <laughs> and just do it. I have no way to back out now. Now I have put all the eggs in that basket and that is for my family. But if I... If it was 2021, I would look at it and be like, why would I start comedy? Like they f- attack comedians and it feels like you can't say anything, but you're brave. You're starting it now and going to do it now. And I kind of, I think that's really kind of really cool. Andy's and he's very, Andy's very brave. Fucked up shit too. Dude, pulled, you got to. He's worse than on this show. Yeah. yeah. I, I, here's the reason why. Uh, <laughs> I truly believe this with all my heart. I, I only really do fear about what God thinks of me. So when sure. other, I can't, ch- I grew up hated so much that it was like, if you hated me, it's like, all right, add them to the list. Like everybody hates me. <laughs> right. Like, I, I don't even think my mom and dad really loved me that much. Like, <laughs> right. I, I, 
I only do things that I love, and if I honor God and I make sure when I go to bed I'm a good person, I'm fine with it. And, right. And getting canceled to me is it's okay. I've made enough money, and my parents are rich, so I could just go back. <laughs> I love how too up. before the podcast started, I was doing all these jokes like, "Oh, I'm going to jerk you off under the table. I'm going to milk you," and then you're just talking about how much you love God. I feel like an idiot. I'm sorry. I apologize you to you that no, you're such a holy no, shit. And those, I was talking about you what I would him. manipulating your genitalia, and I just want to say I'm sorry. I love Jesus, and I love you as a fellow well, Christian. You're a liar. You never what do you mean? any of those things. Jesus I, doesn't like liars. I did. I was yelling. <laughs> you never milked me once. I was never saying I was going, going to. to. You didn't actually. What do you think this is? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's really fun. And I, I could, I it's the first time this year I could say, but getting on stage is, I, I tell, Lo, I told Logan right away, got to get on stage. Dude, it's, it's cathartic. It's feeling. It's cathartic and it's and it's free, man. It's a place to be free. It's like I can get my opinions across. Cause sometimes when you tweet something, it's like you're taken out of context. No good. But if you just let me go up there and talk about things, it's like, and it's so fun to get your opinions out when you think like, you know, like last week I was on stage in Phoenix when they canceled Potato Head, when they said it's no more Mr. Potato Head, oh, now it's yeah. just Potato Head. And I just, I was up there and be like, listen, dude, like I have both Mr. Potato Head and Mrs. Potato Head. My potato head's been transgender since 1991, yeah. dude. I take potato head's arm, put it on Mrs. Potato Head's crotch and give it a penis and put the lips of Mrs. Potato Head on Mr. Potato Head, give it a vagina. Like, I'm having fun with potato head, you know? So I just felt like, and I could get out and the audience can laugh. And, you know, because sometimes the audience is scared and, or people are scared at home. They're like, oh, this world, like I can't do anything or they're so mad about potato head. And then like you come out and you're like, oh, this guy's just being silly about, cause the potato head thing is just that, that to me is telling me like, oh, the pandemic's almost over now. If they, if they have, if we have the time for potato head now, I'm like, okay, so now we can get back to <laughs> back normal to because, things, yeah. because. 2020, the pandemic was a big, was the biggest problem that we have. And we had a right to be upset and it dominated the news and everyone's, a, but before that I was like, oh, we're making problems. Things are so good mm, in America. We're mm. just making shit up. I mean, 2019, the biggest problem was the fucking straws. It's like, people are like, what straw are you using? P plastic, you Nazi? Scumbag. It's like, oh, this is a symptom. Of, we are a great nation. If your literal biggest issue is you're worried about the turtles in Australia. You know what I mean? <laughs> but now when the pandy hit, it's like the shit hit the fan. Now it's like people are dying. You know, like the economy's crippled. So now, but, but when I heard, so now it's like, oh, this is a real ish. But when I, once I heard Potato Head, I was like, oh, wow, we're we getting back. back. We we're back. back. We're I want to also ask the, a question to the group, pose a question to the group. Where the fuck has ISIS been? Has anyone, wor I mean, are they are they quarantining? From what I, are they? From what I understand, uh, Donald Trump killed all of them. No, dude, that's what I heard. With I know their hands. Yeah, I think that. he went over. They there. went away when the Pandy Wandy came out. I, they went away. I think they're doing uh, some minor rogue attacks in uh, yeah. European countries. I but, think. I think. And being a YouTube guy yourself, I mean, you got to say ISIS, excellent edits on the beheading videos. Oh, I mean, the way no, they yeah. cut to. Yeah. The beautiful drone shots. I mean, this is what you want. They have whole production teams. They do have a production yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you should get. I would. I'd like to get a job moonlighting for ISIS. They probably pay good money. Not getting. I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not about what they're saying. I don't want to behead people, and I'm not about the infidel life. But I would. I mean, it, it'd be a nice entry level job like in learning intern? how to edit. Learning how yeah. to edit. Yeah. If you work can, behind the scenes, you almost ISIS. made it the whole podcast without getting canceled. No, <laughs> almost. It's impossible. If you're from Brooklyn, this is what I learned. <laughs> yeah, dude. Good luck. It's Good like, luck. what, do you, dude? That's why I have a, my do I, again. I also have a multiracial child. That's why I have a Puerto Rican daughter. I did it for my career. I'm uncancelable. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I need to buy my, my daughter Puerto Ricans, My Puerto Ricans will come out and be like, you know, on my side. Yeah, dude. No, but you, why? No, dude. We're fine. We're f don't look at this shit. Dude, what do you're you mean? sitting it's next your to your side of the table. What are you Fuck. talking about? Every <laughs> shot of not want every shot of him saying that he's gonna moonlight for ISIS has you in it. You're it right has next me to like him. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Stefano and George Janko came out on a show. Your name's <laughs> George Janko. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a fucking great name. I feel that's like my daughter. I, like I feel like because you know, you I, like, I, I feel like that's like a name like my daughter would come up with for like one of her dolls. Like, Daddy, this one's George Janko. <laughs> 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 George Jenko, I like right it. Here and it's facing you. George Jenko, oh, at George Jenko on Instagram, at Christy Comedy on Instagram. <laughs> Could you see George Jenko like as a name riding out on a unicycle and making a balloon animal for yes. you? Kind of. Yes. Well, Today yes. I'm gonna make you a dog. He's, George Jenko's got mime energy. Yeah. Absolutely. He's, he's got Parisian he's got mime energy. I got a too. mime energy, but that's claustrophobic, so like freak out. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good kid, George. Oh, I mean, only kids are good. I mean, how great is this group? I'm not a kid. It's I'm great. probably older than you, man. No, dude, I'm 36. Well, welcome to the club. So am I. 36? Yeah, but you didn't do heroin. It saved me 10 years of my life. It no, actually oh, you it, did heroin. Yeah, it, it puts you in like a sarcophagus and keeps your skin clear. It happens, dude. Yeah, yeah. Where did you where were you doing H? <laughs> 
Only place you do age, Connecticut. Oh, dude. Oh, you're an East Coast guy, too. Absolutely. Look at us. Yeah. Northeast guys. Not Conne too far. 203, too. Fairfield County. Well, Beautiful, actually, New dude. Haven, New Haven. They just lifted all the restrictions in Connecticut. Connecticut, they said, dude, open one, up. Of the, one of the first yeah. states. One of the first East Coast first, states. Yeah, wow. but, but I mean, like, yeah. yo, Texas started doing it. And yeah. I was like, that makes sense. Arizona, Miami never had it, obviously. They skipped yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then when I saw Connecticut open up, you know, Mayor DeStefano or whatever his name. I, I don't there's, know there's, his name. Yeah. yeah. It's your dad. Cuomo, Cuomo <laughs> is fucking the New York governor. You hate, do you hate him like everybody else? You know what? I've never seen a guy in my life go from first to worst quicker than Cuomo. I mean, this guy was a legend in New York. Like he was putting up number. Like everybody's <laughs> like, we love Cuomo. We love Cuomo. March, we, April, yeah. May. We're like, this guy, I'm voting for this guy for president. And then he just, you know, he got the ego. He got a big head. He got, he's got, she just became that egotistical narcissist maniac where I'm like, guy, slow down. Stop talking to us like idiots. And I kind of felt in the summer, I'm like, this is not going to end well for him. And now it's all the bullshit with the nursing home. But you got to track. Cuomo into the nipple piercing. But you yes. got to track. You got to track. Wait, wait, he, wait what Pierce? is he? He's the governor. He's the governor of New no, York. No, there's Chris Cuomo's his brother. Chris there's Cuomo's his guy. brother on CNN. But but there, you oh, got a track oh. record of it there because you you think Cuomo's the first to do it, but before Cuomo coming out of New York City, there was a man that people looked at as a god. Rudy Giuliani. Rudy fucking Giuliani. <laughs> <Christ> <laughs> if. That's what he's no is. one has no one has dropped the ball harder Dude. than fucking Giuliani. Rudy G. On 9-11, savior. God. Fucking God hero. God almighty Everybody has come was down like, in a, vessel, a human vessel yeah. through Rudy Giuliani. Let me ask you this. You, in Connecticut area, Northeast, so you felt, you know, I lived in New York, but feeling 9-11 on the East Coast, no Northeast. No people that were on the 105th floor. Same with me. fucking Dude, how about bro. this? I played basketball. I was I was 16 years old playing in a basketball league at FDNY, Fire, Fire Department of New York Basketball League, that had all active duty firefighters, and each team would pick, like, one high school kid. So, and, like, it was, like, a thing. Like, everybody's got a high school. So, I was the high school kid on this FDNY team. Eight of my teammates died uh. in 9-11. Eight of them. We were supposed to play the championship game Wednesday, uh. September, uh, Wednesday, September 12th. We were supposed to play eight of them passed away. But so New York, you know, 9-11 hits, you know, guys, you know, like us from the Northeast quicker. When I didn't masturbate, I remember at all. I didn't, not once. I felt like it was sacrilegious. George, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, desecrate our Jesus like that. I didn't jerk off at all on nine, uh, from 9-11 until the first week of October when we declared war in Iraq. Did you do the same thing? I, made I it, held it in. I made it about three weeks, but I was so into Giuliani that one day he gave a press conference and I broke. You broke, uh, yeah, yeah, dude. I jerked off to Rudy Giuliani giving <laughs> yes. a press conference, yes. man. It's fucked up. And now, <laughs> no, I, dude, can't, now I can't How not. crazy is that that the 9-11 East Coast thing is like such a, it's such a connection. It, because, it really is. Yeah, because everybody knew somebody who died. But it's going, it's it's crazy to imagine that it's kind of like the, the 20 hype years of later. it is like kind of, I think it will feel it forever as East Coast guys, but it just, it it's almost a, feels like it's fading out. It's a, a weird bit. thing. You know, it's a weird thing because I remember, I remember in the neighborhood in Brooklyn where, you know, where I live on 9-11, after 9-11, those weeks after 9-11, you wouldn't see a car or a house without the American Absolutely. flag. Everybody Absolutely. Everybody had that flag. Absolutely. Every single person, flag, flag, flag. Then during the pandemic, same kind of eerie feeling like shit shut down. If you have an American flag, you're a scumbag. people are like, you're a scumbag. Yeah. What'd you vote for Trump? You're a scumbag. It's so crazy how in just 20 years, like that whole symbol of the flag shifted. And I'm blaming it on the Russians. I think they've infiltrated us from within. It's possible. And they're dividing it's us from possible. within. On, on, or the Chinese. Or and the it, Chinese. And, it, and it's warfare because we're not going to invade mainland China or mainland Russia. And they're not going to invade us. That's not how World War III is going to happen, baby. No, no, no. We're doing this stuff on the internet. And I feel like that, that to me was like, this isn't us, man. This is somebody got inside our heads and separated us because it's crazy how like in 20 years, the flag is complete opposite meanings now. By the way, you, you wouldn't know this. None of us would on the show, but cause they don't telecast like we do from, from those countries, but we're doing the same thing. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, we're, bro, and by the way, we're doing far worse. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That, that China, Russia, U.S. connection is so much deeper than people fucking understand. It's been going since the Cold sure, War. Sure, it's, it's all been war going since post-World War II. Dude, it's dirty shit. It's all war nasty. tactics. Yeah, dude, I understand a, a terrorist group that gets so upset and wants to become a terrorist because the United States or some Western country bomb their family Absolutely. and kill their family. I get Absolutely. it, dude. Just like the same where they should get, like when, you know, if you're like causing us harm and killing us, we're, it's just, it, you start to think about like, when does it end? Like, I love history. I love learning about American history from the eyes 
of the enemy. Other country, I yeah. like learning it from the what's the point of view of Japan? What's the point of view of Germany? What's the point of view of the Middle East? That's where you got to really learn it. Because America, it's like, you know, the winners write the history books like, oh, Paul Revere, the Declaration of Independence. It's all bullshit. Well, the, you got to learn the other way. The, the ISIS shit. And, and and those people over there, the tricky thing about that that a lot of people don't understand is like they're fighting with our weapons. Sure. We gave them those weapons. Those, Dude, we literally of, gave them the weapons. At the end of the first Rambo, they give a shout out to um the Taliban. Right, right. Because they're like, the Taliban was on our side. Yeah. And then they have to the edit homies. it out when it's on TBS now because Ooh. they're like, oh shit, can't shut out the Taliban. So that's just alone. Shit. <laughs> you know? So it's why, yeah, dude, history is my shit. I love history. It's dude. so interesting. Oh God, it's the best, dude. History is, I used to do a podcast called The History Hyena. Shout out Giannis Pompas, my uh, co-host on that. Um, we stopped doing that podcast, but that was fucking dope too, is, is talking about history every week where it's like, dude, I was learning so much because it's easy to just get mad at something that you see on the internet that's a one minute edited thing on TikTok or Instagram and you're like, oh, this has happened in history. But then when you start, if you actually like sit down and read and try to do the research, you're like, wait a second, there's a lot of sides to every story. And I don't, I understand, like, I feel blessed to be a comedian, be have the time to read and research. I know the people working nine to five or longer don't have the time. I, I get it. But I do feel that's a big problem in our country is we don't, we're, we're working, all working so hard. The common people are working so hard. They can't, they don't have time to really learn what the truth is. Because, headline culture. Yeah, it's we talk headline. about this a lot. It's, it's we clicks, talk about this man. a lot. Yeah, people, we, people see something, they see somebody's being canceled for this reason. And the way that we're we're breeding now, or or the way we're acting, is to just accept that, and then no. and then further inflame it. No. Yo, wow, this person's getting canceled for this reason. I better tweet about it. Yo, fuck this no, person. Dude. My daughter, any, and this is just again my personal opinion, just being a father. But anything, any, my daughter, I want her to learn about. The, the enemies and the bad parts of our history because I need her to know about that. I don't want to, can't, you can't just erase the Confederacy. You know what I mean? You can't right, just right. erase Nazis. You can't do that because she needs to learn about why that happened and, and so we don't make the same mistakes. But Absolutely. The, pe the people just want to erase it. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? You're erasing it. Like I almost, now, now, I'm, now I'm looking at you. Now I'm like, what are you hiding, you fucking Confederate Nazi <laughs> that you want me to rip down that statue? <laughs> yeah, you know? I don't know what I'm talking about sometimes, no, so I apologize. I just, I just flip, and then I just feel the energy go in the room, and I'm like, well, I'm bombing, so what can you do? No, <laughs> oh, you look at the camera, and you plug your shit. <laughs> <laughs> George Janko, everybody. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> At George Janko. Oh no. Yeah, dude. I, I got I try to they try to cancel me once, but they used the wrong name. It was what they try to cancel you for? What'd you do? I I I don't want to go back into it. But they oh, okay. But basically this is what happened. I'll say it because like what the fuck? Uh that he asked me, is it manly if a, if a guy wears a dress? And I was like, Oh, I didn't think it was manly, but like yeah. it, it was like when Harry Harry Styles wore the dress. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what they got mad at me about. George, George took the traditional approach. That's oh, all. Oh, God. No, it's not the traditional approach. When you go into yeah. a store and you yeah. ask the guy, hey. Oh, you're not going to double down now, are you? Yeah. I mean, you, you George, said what you said. You're not going to double down. the traditional approach. Dude, make a Patreon. <laughs> it's, I'm not coming at anybody. It's just, my, it's just fucking, dude. Yeah, it's no, what I, I get it, dude. But that's what I'm saying. It's all, it's all words speak louder than actions. You're a good guy. You love God. You're fucking so creepy, actually. How much you love God. <laughs> You're such a good person. And but people want to take one word and take it out of context. That's the bullshit. I'm telling you, dude. I really feel like as a people, we're just gonna start because people are caring less and less. Even now, if you notice, like even when the news keeps tries to keep us fearful, when they're like, "There's a new strain, the Narnia strain, that's <laughs> Johnson." and Johnson vaccine doesn't fix the Narnia this is, this trait. is the reaction. Yeah, we're like, fuck you, dude. They're like, you have, to, you have to triple mask now. You have to, if you're going to an airport, put on a butt plug. We're like, no, dude, we're not doing that anymore. So little, and that's starting to happen we're with that too. We're not doing that anymore. Where it's like, we're not doing, I'm not, yeah, dude, I, I, I used to fly Spirit Airlines. You needed a butt plug even before the pandemic. Um, <laughs> shout out Spirit if they're a sponsor. The, the giant fucking piss plane flies through the, the sky. Worst. They're, yeah, they're bright yellow. The bright Don't worry yellow about planes. it, George. Oh, look, you're back. See, nothing happened, dude. You're back. No, you also didn't get. It was a couple comments. It was like three people. Three people. No, 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 no. It was, was, was trending. It was trending. I was trending, trending for, him. for taking the opposite stance. You didn't get canceled. Uh, yeah, but they said because of, and they said the wrong name, and I was like George okay. Bush. They said <laughs> George Bush. <laughs> Shout out George Bush. <laughs> you know, I hey, I, I've talked about this on the show before as well. But you know what his favorite thing to do is? No, Who, George you can Bush? never guess it. Jo uh, let me guess. George Bush's favorite thing to do is uh, Pokemon cards. Wrong. Clear brush. He likes to clear brush on his ranch. With a scythe. What is brush? You mean like like scythe. like if a tumbleweed rolls out in the middle of a, a path? Wow. He likes to go out and move it. Oh, look Le right there. I got a piece of brush. 
clear my move, brush. That's his fate. He <laughs> said, bro, I watched him talk on stage one time. I was so enamored with him as a, as a person and his legacy of bombing was just incredible. And I was like, what, you know, what is he? He was a carpet bomber, dude. What, one of the biggest bombers <laughs> ever. Absolutely, bro. But I, I said, what is this? <laughs> what is this, this fucking guy's favorite thing to do? Clear brush. Yeah, look loves at, clear and brush. This is how you know we're having a good podcast. Look at this kid, fully asleep, dead asleep. That's how you know it's great. We, That's how you know I'm really brought the heat today. Yo, Chris yo. Stefano came in here and killed it. Look at this guy. The kid can fully fall asleep down. anywhere. I swear to God. Yeah, but during a comedy show, I mean, Jesus I Christ. Think, He's no, like the Milton of, no. of Germans. When you guys were arguing yesterday, like in the heat of the argument, he said it put him to sleep. That's what he told me afterwards. He said, he, I go to sleep in the middle of the argument. He's German. He's German, yeah. Not, but he's from Germany. Germany. Was yeah. that German? Oh, but yeah. Russia from Hamburg. Uh, they argue so long for such a long time. I take a nap. You think it's weird that- it, That's not a German accent I take at all. A, I take a nap. Boo. <laughs> boo. We didn't catch that. <laughs> Oh, see that dodge? You no, see I that? got you. No, it did it. it oh, play it back. Play it back. Play it back. Slow play it back. Um, we don't have that capability on this show. <laughs> last, my last note for the show. My personal last note. I don't do, want. Yeah. Do, do you understand that both hamburgers and frankfurters? Yes. Come from Germany. Hundred percent. How fucking weird is that? Hamburg and Frankfurt, dude. How fucking weird is that? It's a wild. You ever been to Germany? No, I haven't, dude. It's sick. It's cool. I want to go. I've been, cool. I've been, you been, been, you been out there? I have. Dude, there's some go, crazy clubs. You go hunt, clubbing? Yeah. Well, not really, but- Late night. I, late night clubs. There's yeah. one in particular. I've heard a story about it. I didn't go myself, but there's like a bouncer who lets you in if he knows you, and inside the club, some wonky shit takes place. Yeah, it's I'm, like Berlin, right? I'm Berlin? talking about- You know, like the- It's yeah, it's. it's the European version of the box. You know the box. I know the box, you know dude. The yeah, box. I saw somebody get a whole bucket full of shit and piss thrown on them there. So imagine that, but in Europe. Great, but in Europe. Yeah, so European shit and piss. Yeah, yeah. Which is, yeah. They go crazy. Dude, they go crazy. They, dude, but yeah, Germany's a good time. The, what, you ever go to Oktoberfest? I, we I wanted want to. to. We almost did. We dude. almost did. We almost wore the Birkin. What's it called? Birkin. Yeah. Bir Dave, Birkin. Look, he's up. Look, it's Birkin. Panel. Panel. What's it called? At Oktoberfest, the Birkin. Lederhosen. Lederhosen, that's it. There it, it is. Our house and David, you take a little nappy? Yeah. How you, how you feeling? Can't listen to you talk anymore. Oh. <laughs> he said, wow. can't listen to you talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he fell asleep when I asked him if he was Jewish. He was like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, right. That's usually where he springs he up. He springs up. He's like, I have an Jewish idea. people in this room? Where are they? <laughs> And Love Jewish people. Shout out Jewish people. He's, he's not even bro. German, bro. He, he just grew up in he's Germany. Polish. He's fucking Polish. Paul, dude, fucking Chesh. Paul, love Polish. Dude, I got a friend, Polish kid. Like, literally one of my best friends. Is his name Jacob? His name's not Jacob, Jacob but it Lindholm. could be. Dude, this kid, 19 years old, 19 years old, decides to get circumcised. At 19. Terrible choice. Ballsy. Dude, he was born in Warsaw, Bold. so they don't, they don't snip it. Dude, I like nice. that. That was good. I like it. Yeah, hit, him, hit him, too. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Um, 19 years old kid starts to get, decides to get circumcised because his girlfriend was like, oh, I can't deal with an uncircumcised penis. So he's like, this kid I gets, can't deal dude, with he gets snipped and he shows up one day Well, you know, basketball, college basketball team. He goes, um, and I want to be a physical therapist. So I, he comes in on crutches and I'm like, dude, what happened? You're on crutches. Like, did you hurt your knee, your back? Like, why are you on crutches? And he goes, yeah, I got a knee back issue. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa what do you mean a knee back issue? That's a wild, there's no muscle that goes from the knee to the back. What happened? He goes, yeah, I got a knee back issue. And I'm like, you don't have a knee back issue. Like something's, what's going on? It's like, I'm gonna need my dick back. I know. And I'm like, what's wow. going on? <laughs> this kid's two for two right here. Wow, and I'm like, that was good. That was really good. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on with your knee, you know? And he goes, he goes, listen, are you promised you won't tell anybody? I'm like, Abs dude, absolutely not. He goes, um, I just got circumcised. And I was like, yo, let me see your dick. <laughs> dude, this kid pulled his pants down. You had to see what his penis, it looked like an, like somebody just, be it looked like an ISIS beheading video. That's what it looked like. <laughs> Little dick, bleeding, bro. Little he, dick. He, yeah, because it shrinks in because your dick doesn't want to get snipped like that. So it's, it's hiding for dear life. And dude, snipped. And he was like, don't tell anyone. And I just told everyone in, impulsive. <laughs> What's his Logan name? Paul. What's yeah. his name? What? Nothing, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, and I, w I would be willing to bet they broke up probably shortly after that. Dude. Yeah. I swear to God, two weeks later, she dumped him. That's how it works. Yeah, dude. That's, That's why I, 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 I swear to the God. The dick now? He's change, got good dick now. You change your dick for a girl, they're out. Yeah, dude. It's, it's, it, I've heard these stories. Yeah, dude. I, and I don't, anyway. I, I'm, I regret getting circumcised. I'm mad at my mom because, um, you know, my penis is, it's decent. Five, six, seven with warts. 
But <laughs> but it's just but it's just you know but it's just the foreskin would have gave it that nice you know what I mean. So I see this guy's fucking coming. I love this guy coming. That is, now. So that's my boxing coach, dude. This guy's great. What, what you wearing, Mel? I gave it to him. Somebody's a brand sent it to me. He's and by the every way, every boxing coach has that voice. Yo, they yo. always they always just beat throat cancer or currently have it and don't know they have it. That's just how every boxing coach is. And by the way, <laughs> he's the guy who has a saying for everything. Yeah. Every day of the week, he got a different saying for he's whatever. From New York too. From yeah. New York. What part? I L.E.S. L.E.S. Baby, the Lower East Side. Yep. Sixteen siblings. Brooklyn. He's Bushwick. The, he, oh, really? Yes, sir. I'm the I'm the last white guy. The last white guy. <laughs> yeah. He's the original hipster from L.E.S. Yes. No, 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 no. I don't speak it. <laughs> yeah. It's Parmesan, no. No, but the LES, dude. Have you been back recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's well, the best. Oh, my God, dude. You must be rolling in the dough then. The you best. got some property the in the LES? Ride around, the day? ride around a gearless bicycle with some, oh, some really short shorts on. It's the best LES. <laughs> What right. the fuck are we talking right, that's about? It. That's We're that's talking it. about your New York. That's all we got. Go, guys, go to uh, Chrissy D. Patreon slash com slash pushy. Go ahead. Uh, Christy <laughs> Comedy on YouTube. Christy Chaos. Hey, Bay Podcast. Christy Chaos Podcast. Hey, Bay Podcast. And uh, yeah, dude, I'm going to be working out with Logan uh, Logan Paul every day. Here we go. Here we go. Hit that subscribe button. Thank yeah. you guys for listening, watching, viewing, subscribing. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.